All right, today we're going to be looking at chromosomes and exactly what they are in some vocabulary and kind of how that might connect to genetics and also looking at karyotypes. Um, and this is stuff that you might have learned in other classes. It's good to revisit and we're going to take it maybe a step further than you've heard it's other places as well. Okay, so let's just go back and remind ourselves. Remember inside of your cell. Um, this would be an animal cell here. I can tell because it's circular. We've got like a nucleus and inside the nucleus is where the DNA is. Okay, remember DNA, double strand, double helix, part, just a little segment of DNA is called a gene. And remember one gene codes for like a protein, right? So we've got this huge double helix, right? Um, but as it turns out, if you take a huge long piece of DNA that's all like coiled up, you get a chromosome. Okay, so let's look at that more specifically. Um, when that DNA kind of coils up, it doesn't just, it's got a little organization to it. If you think about like yarn, buying yarn in like a store, the yarn isn't just there as loose yarn. It's like wrapped up into a ball, right? To keep it from getting tangled, to keep it organized. Well, same thing with your DNA, okay? So your DNA is gonna wrap around these little like protein balls called histones, they're seen right here, okay? And so your DNA is gonna wrap around that to help keep it kind of organized. And then even those histones are gonna kind of wrap and coil up. And when they do that, that is called chromatin, okay? When DNA is just like wrapped and round around a histone and it's like tightly packed together, okay? And so if you put these things together, now you get a chromosome, okay? So a chromosome is just a long piece of DNA that is condensed into this chromatin form. So it's a long piece of DNA that's been wrapped around histones and like coiled up super tight, okay? And this is something that you can see using a microscope, okay? And your DNA is not always in chromosome form. So let me show you here. Right here, this is a cell, just like a regular cell living its life doing its thing. Here's like a regular cell living its life doing its thing. You can see the nucleus and you can see this like purplish bluish stuff. Um, the stuff that, that has been dyed is are the nucleic acid. So you can see it's there, but you cannot see individual chromosomes. Okay. But look at these like wormy stringy things right here. And these wormy stringy things right here. Those are chromosomes. See the very big difference, how this is just like a weird, like cloud situation. This is almost like your DNA. If it's like a pile of pasta on a plate or something. Okay. And here is your DNA in chromosome form. So it's wound itself around histones and it's got nice tightly packed and, and wound up um, into chromatin form. And your cells will put their chromosomes, their, their DNA into chromosomes when your cells are getting ready to divide. Okay. And so that's when we see, um, chromosome structure. Okay. Otherwise when your cell is just living its life, doing its thing, your nucleus looks like this. Your DNA is not in chromosome form, but when your cell is getting ready to divide, it winds itself up into chromosomes. Okay. So here, right here is a chromosome over here is a chromosome. What? The only difference is this chromosome Here's just one. Here is it after it's been duplicated. Okay. So your chromosome is going to make a copy of itself. Remember we learned about DNA replication, your chromosome, your DNA is going to make a copy of itself right before the cell is going to divide or something. And so what the DNA does is it makes an exact copy of itself and it joins itself to its copy. Okay. And so this, so the chromosome, this is all one, which means that this left part here is one chromosome and this right part here is one chromosome. So this is one chromosome and this is a duplicated chromosome. Okay. Some vocab here, this left thing would be a chromatid and this right thing would be a chromatid. Okay. So chromatids or sister chromatids are just identical copies of chromosomes and they're connected together in the middle part here. Okay. And this middle part is called a centromere boop, it's the middle part where like chromosomes indent in. Okay. So oftentimes you'll see chromosomes drawn in this X type shape. If it's after they've been duplicated, right? Getting ready for, um, mitosis. Sometimes they're just, they're unduplicated. Okay. So you can see them drawn like this or like this, either way, it's a chromosome. Um, you'll notice with this little, either way, these like things above and below the centromere are called arms. And so with our chromosomes, the P arms are the short arms, the Q arms are the long. Um, and typically, you know, if there's going to be a short arm, it's going to be on top. Okay. So the P arm would be on top and the Q arm would be on the bottom. 
All right. So our chromosomes, uh, you have them in your cells. And where did you get them from? Your mom and dad, right? Hopefully, you know, okay, little birds and bees, right? That you got created from your mom and your dad. And so all your genetic info is half from your mom, half from your dad. Okay. And so human beings, we have 23 different kinds of chromosomes. What do I mean by different kind of chromosome? Well, remember chromosomes, just a piece of DNA. And as it turns out, you can tell chromosomes apart by how long they are and where their centromere is. So basically we have 23 different lengths of chromosomes. Okay. But here's the thing. We get one each from mom and one each from dad. Okay. Huh? So if we have 23 kinds of chromosomes and we get two of each, one from mom and one from dad, well then how many chromosomes are there in like a cell then? Mm, let's do some math. What's 23 times two? Beep, beep, boop, boop. 46. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So we have 23 kinds and you get you have two of each kind, but you get one from mom, one from dad. Okay. So you kind of duplicates here. So let's talk about that. So some more vocabulary here. A homologous chromosome. What is that? That is a pair of chromosomes that are the same length and have the same centromere. So they're both the same kind of chromosome and they contain the same genes, but not the same code from those genes. One comes from mom and comes from dad. Okay. What does that mean? Okay. So here we go on a chromosome. This could be a piece of DNA. Let's say you have the gene as this diagram shows for dimples, one for widow's peak. That's um, along your hairline. If your hairline is straight or if it like comes down a little bit into a point. Okay. That's called a widow's peak and the gene for attached earlobes. If you have dangly earlobes or attached earlobes. Okay. Let's say those are three different segments of DNA on this chromosome. Okay. And let's say you got this chromosome from mom and this chromosome from dad. But the idea here is you would get both of these chromosomes are going to have a gene for dimples, but maybe your mom has dimples and your dad doesn't. Okay. So you're going to have that gene there, but the genes might not be that have the same info on them might be different orders of A's, T's, C's, and G's, right? Same thing for widow's peak. Maybe both your parents have a flat hairline or maybe they both have a widow's peak or maybe it's one of each, right? Or earlobes, right? So that's what it means by they contain the same genes, but not the same code for those genes. Okay. If it's eye color, you may or may not have the same eye color as both of your parents. You could have gotten a blue gene for eyes for your mom and like a brown gene for eyes from your dad. Okay. Or something like that. All right. But the idea here is they would both have a gene for eye color on that chromosome. In this case, they both have a gene for dimples. They both have a gene for widow's peak, whether or not they have one's a different story. And they would both have a gene for like what shape your ears are. All right. What the idea is, so this chromosome you might get from your mom, dimples, widow peak, attached earlobes. This chromosome from your dad, you might get no dimples, no widow's peak, and no attached earlobes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the homologous chromosomes, we have two of the same chromosome type, but we have one from mom, one from dad. Here's another picture. Okay. Here's your one from dad. Here's your one from mom. Sometimes you'll see them like this because maybe they're duplicated, but the idea is we can tell that they are the same chromosome type because they're the same length and they have the same general shape. Okay. Their centromeres are in the exact same location. Oh, that's a lot of vocab and like what? Just stick with me here, okay? Sometimes things are best done with visuals, which is why I have for you. Da, 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 da. Look, it's a picture of all the chromosomes in a cell, okay? Real picture. This is not a cartoon, a real picture. So you can see here, so these would be homologous chromosomes, okay? This is chromosome number one. One of these would be from dad, one of these would be from mom. We don't know by looking at it. And that's why we have two of number two, one from mom, one from dad, two of number three, two of number four, two of number five, right? Six, all the way down, okay? This picture of chromosomes in a cell is called a karyotype, okay? So they can take a picture of your chromosomes and they can use computer software to drag and drop them around. So look, like this is maybe what it would look like when the picture is taken. And then the scientists are going to order and arrange them and start pairing them up. So this is like a hot jumbled mess, right? Whoa. But what they do is they start with the longest chromosomes and they put those two together as chromosome number one. They also apply a little dye to the chromosomes and you look and you see how there's like a pattern. This pattern of how the dye attaches to the chromosomes can help the person working the microscope, like figure out what's what, because the the dye pattern will come up the same. 
And because it's real life, like things aren't always in a straight line. So these are both chromosome number one, but like, yeah, they're not going to be perfectly straight, right? Um, they might be slightly different shapes, but we can, um, we can tell by the length. Um, it's sometimes hard to see the centromere, but we can definitely tell by the banding pattern. So this is a karyotype, okay? A picture of all of the chromosomes in a cell. Okay, so zeroing in, if you think about it, on our bodies, regardless of what gender you are, and by gender, I mean biological gender, okay? So not maybe the gender you identify with, but the gender, the biological gender you were born with and have parts for, okay? Um, regardless of your biological gender, most of the body structures and processes are the same. Eyes, ears, nose, throat, heart, blood vessels, muscles, bones, right? We all have those things, all the organs, things like digestion, things like your immune system, right? These are all things that all humans have and share. We're going to need the genetic code for that. That genetic code is found in the first 22 pairs of chromosomes. There's only 23, okay? So the first 22 are just like building all those structures that we all need. And those are called autosomes, Okay. And they're homologous. You get one from mom, one from dad, and you have the same info on both. So, you know, let's say on one pair of chromosomes, it's going to be the instructions for how to make a heart and blood vessels. You're going to get those instructions from your mom and from your dad. Handy, right? Because just in case one of those chromosomes ends up being damaged, you're still going to have a set of working instructions. That's why we have both. Okay. So you get one from mom, one from dad. Okay. That's why. So like, you know, maybe this one, does liver and pancreas and intestines. And this one does like your cardiovascular system. And this one does now, I don't know. Okay. I'm just saying. So like all of these first 22 pairs of chromosomes are just dealing with all those structures and processes that we all have in common. And the fancy pants word for that is an autosome. Okay. Well, what about that last pair? Mm, that last pair are referred to as the sex chromosomes. Okay. So these are going to be the chromosomes that determine if you are biologically female or biologically male. Okay. Um, and so these two chromosomes, um, are going to be giving more of the instructions for those structures and processes related to like gender and reproduction. Okay. Um, specifically the Y chromosome. Okay. That one in particular, all the Y chromosome has are instructions on how to make the male parts and pieces. Okay. Cause if you'll notice, look at our genders. If you have two X's, you're a female biologically. And if you have X, Y, you have a male. So both genders have an X. So that Y chromosome in particular is really what determines what has the code to make the male things. All right. These are not homologous because think about it. What's a homologous chromosome again? Let's go back to it. Let's keep our vocab straight. It's a pair of chromosomes that are the same length, have the same centimeter position and contain the same genes. Okay. Well, if you have an X and a Y, these are not the same length right? They don't have the same centimeter position. And the Y is going to tell you how to make male parts, but the X isn't because females have X's too. Okay. So these sex chromosomes are not homologous. Okay. Cause they don't have the same info found on them. All right. So here we go. Let's look at it. So here's a normal karyotype. We got 22 pairs of autosomes. And then over here, we have one pair. If you have XX, you're female or if you don't have those, if you have X, Y, then you'd be biologically male. Okay. Now I've talked about these homologous chromosomes and kind of right here, you can see it like, I'll look how they're, that's where that's pinched in. That's the centromere. Okay. But over here, it's pinched in in a slightly different spot. Okay. So we can see those positions kind of more clearly on a picture like this. So let's take a look at some more centromere vocab. Okay. We can help figure out what's what by where the centromere position is. So if the centromere is right here in the middle, that is called metacentric. If the centromere is right in the middle, if the centromere is a little bit above the middle, but there's still like a decently length and what, how long is decent? I don't know, but like a decently length, uh, P arm, remember the P is the top arm that's called sub metacentric. If the centromere is pretty close to the top where the P arms are really, really short, it almost looks like maybe there's like little nubbins or like little bitty ears on top. That's called acrocentric. And then telocentric is where the um, centromeres are like right on top. Okay. So like if we go back, number one is pretty metacentric, right there in the middle. 
Um, let's see. Submetacetric, hmm, maybe two, maybe four, maybe seven, right? Not quite in the middle, maybe a little bit above being in the middle. For acrocentric here, closer to the top with little like nubbins, um, something like that. I would think maybe like, um, like a 14 or 15 maybe where we see these little like boops. Okay. And something like, uh, you know, 21 or 22 would be telocentric. Some of the other ones, it could be hard to tell. Maybe 18 might be like acrocentric. Okay. So those are our, um, different words for that. And then, uh, last thing we're going to touch base with today are mutations. Okay. So we learned about mutations that can be made with making proteins. We learned about large scale and small scale. And I mentioned that large scale mutations have to do with chromosomes. Well, here we are coming back to it. Okay. So things that can be funky with chromosomes is you can have an entire chromosome extra or missing. So if we look at this, um, karyotype on the left, you'll notice that it has all 22 pairs of autosomes, but instead of having an X, X or X, Y, it just has an X. Okay. So this person is missing an entire chromosome, which is why it's considered large scale because like, that's a whole lot of DNA you're missing. Okay. Over here, uh, they've got an X and a Y. This person would be biologically male, but what's the like thing that's kind of funky with this one? Ooh, look, three copies of chromosome 21. There should only be two of everything other than two of every autosome, not the sex chromosomes, but there should be two of all the autosomes. This one is three twenty one. This is the karyotype in an individual with Down syndrome, otherwise known as trisomy 21, because you have three extra copies of chromosome 21. So even just being a human in the world, I'm sure you're a little bit familiar with Down syndrome. And so you can see how having an extra chromosome throws things off a little bit, right? And not quite the, what we would call the quote unquote typical development there, right? Um, some other kind of chromosome alterations or mutations you can have is you can have a deletion. Okay. And so like here they've labeled it. And let's say if the D gets deleted, gene D gets deleted, then it goes from ABC straight to E. Okay. Don't get confused with the pictures here because this deletion on the left and over here, deletion is the second one down. Okay. So here the little blue part bloop, got deleted. Okay. You can also have a duplication where a part gets repeated where it wasn't supposed to. So here we take the BC and if we repeat it, it goes instead of ABC to EFG, it goes ABC, BC right? That'd be a duplication. And again, don't get confused up here is a duplication. Instead of one blue patch, we would give two in a row. There's an inversion where part of it gets like, um, switched with another part. So instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? The, um, this gets flippy floppied. So A, D, C, B, E. Whoa. Okay. So another way to look that breaks your brain. Look at it this way. The blue and the yellow swap places. Okay. They're supposed to, it's supposed to go yellow, blue, but your chromosome gets messed up and it goes blue, yellow. Okay. And then the very last type is a translocation where part of one chromosome detaches and attaches to part of another chromosome. Okay. And so here we have two different chromosomes, right? They're different lengths. They're not homologous. And so this blue is going to hop on with the green and the yellow is going to hop on with the purple. Okay. So those are different um, alterations in chromosome structure that we can have. And any of these types, duplication, deletion, aversion, translocation, and also this leads to certain disorders that can have small to major impacts on growth and development.